Alright you guys, so as you guys saw in the last video, we know Blue, she runs, she drives, she sounds great, she does all the things, but there's some little problems that we need to fix. So, that's the game plan for today is to start dialing in the Porsche Roo, Blue, whatever you want to call it. I like Porsche Roo. Some people get upset that I call it Porsche Roo because it's not Porsche, Porsche engine, but it's a flat six anyways. I like it. I think the name suits very well. It'll walk most Porsches anyways once fully tuned. So, uh, with this the game plan for today is to get the car aligned we're going to cut the front bumper up a little bit more to expose more of the front mount intercooler to get more airflow through that intercooler and through that radiator while driving to help reduce temperatures even more on top of that we need to get the speedometer working so before we do any of that I have, I'm gonna get the car up in the air and I'm gonna test a theory. I'm gonna take out the IC7 display, uh, move it out of the way for a minute, plug in the stock cluster, plug in the Haltech again, and then try spinning the wheel by hand to see if I can get it to read speed. Because if it reads speed with the stock cluster in, then that means I need to figure something out here, which could be as simple as a CAN input or something, just to complete that CAN network. I'm not entirely sure yet so that's something that we're gonna have to figure out today the fuel level sensor is also something i'd like to try to tackle i don't know if i'm gonna be able to figure that out today because to be honest i don't quite know what i'm gonna do about the fuel level sensor uh, i've got the stock reading of ohms for empty and full but the haltech takes calibration in volts and i don't quite know how to transfer all that over and then by the end of this video we'll go drive this thing some more to get some more pov action for you guys um the pov stuff is actually really fun really cool to be able to do on this car so first things first i'm gonna start with electrical stuff i'm gonna hop in the car pull apart the dash uh get this guy plugged in get the haltech plugged in and see what's going on worst case scenario i think i can run the can high and can low into the ic7 but i'd like the ecm to be able to read vehicle speed so that way it can detect gear position um odometer trip all of that stuff so i need to figure something out with this i mean worst case scenario i can extend that harness and relocate it somewhere but that's really not what i want to do um it's just there's got to be something built into here that does something i just i don't know what it does so let's start tearing apart the dash real quick and uh see what we can make happen here with the stock gauge cluster in i'm gonna go spin the steer or spin one of the wheels by hand to see if it'll read speed. Speed's gonna be in the bottom right down here. Speed, so let me spin these wheels, see what happens. Why is wheel speed not working now? Maybe I need to spin it faster. All right, I'm gonna spin it as fast as I can by hand and then watch the footage to see what happens. Ah! Why is it not reading wheel speed now? What the hell? All right, well, let me hop in the software and see what's going on. Maybe, maybe something's not active or turned off. Let me figure it out. Yeah, I can't figure this out. I've been at this for two hours now, trying different things. And I went back and I watched the video of when I got the wheel speed sensors to work. Ow. Oh, we got up to three miles an hour. I'm gonna try spinning a front wheel. Is it changing? Oh my God, it is. And I was, the only thing that's different now is I was using the ESP software versus the NSP software. So now that I'm on the NSP software, for some reason, I can't pick up speed on the ECM. Like worst case scenario, I could get the Haltech GPS module and just do it that way. But I know the wheel speed sensors will work because I've gotten them to work. So. I don't know, I'm gonna call Haltech in like two hours. Haltech Australia, let me be specific, because Haltech USA is the worst customer service I have literally ever dealt with. They physically, they literally, they just do not want to help you at all. So uh, I'm gonna give Haltech Australia a call here in a little bit, see what they have to say. I know that the ECM is seeing the wheel speed sensors. I can see it because I can assign front left, front right, rear left, rear right wheel speed sensors to the ECM. I just can't pick up a, 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 a signal. Like it just, it's just no signal, even though it can see the sensors. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. So uh, I'm gonna jump to something a little bit easier right now. Let's cut up my bumper a little bit more. You guys need a step-by-step -step mask off where you're gonna cut, um, go in there, cut it, clean up the burrs, use touch-up paint if you want to, to hide any black lines from the uh, cut plastic. And that'll be it. So let's knock this out.
right, bumper's all trimmed up. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I ended up using a torch and a razor blade to get the cuts a little bit cleaner and then I went over it with a sander. So pretty happy with that. It shows a lot more of the intercooler. So we're exposing a lot more of the fins to be able to actually get air into them and pass through, uh, both through the intercooler and the radiator. So that way coolant temps will be a little bit better. Um, charge temps will be a little bit better. It's a win-win. We're really not losing much. The top of the intercooler ends way up here actually. So maybe we are, we're still losing like a third of the intercooler, I guess I should say. But you know what? We have more of it exposed. To fully expose that intercooler, we'd have to cut all the way up to the grill and then all the way down. I just don't think I want to cut that high. I don't know. I think it might just look a little bit funny if we did that, but I don't think that looks bad at all. I'm about it. I also messed with the hood pins a little bit to get the alignment of the hood and the fenders and everything a little bit cleaner and crisper because they were a little bit off. So sweet. Uh, now that all that's taken care of, Haltech opens up in about five minutes. So I'm going to hop on the phone, give them a call, uh, let them remote into my computer and see if they can figure out this wheel speed sensor issue with me. Um, Cause to be honest, I have, I have absolutely no idea. I have no clue at this point. It used to work when I was on the ESP software. And then when I updated to the NSP software, it stopped working. So let's see if Haltech can help us. Are you the sort of person who doesn't like messy rewiring and prefers a simple and clean ECU install? Take a look at Haltech's range of plug-in adapters. Covering a wide range of makes and models, these adapters plug directly into your car's harness and can be installed in less than one hour. Okay, so I just got off the phone with our friends over at Haltech Australia. For, I talked to Scott, the dude in all the YouTube videos. I feel so cool because I got to talk to him. That dude's a genius, by the way. So um, he took over my computer, wheel speed sensors. Nothing's picking up wheel speed sensors. So um, maybe we have a bad ABS module. Maybe the heat from the dyno killed this thing. I don't really know how to test these. I think I guess I could depin it, check the harness first to make sure the harness is sending power to the unit. If the unit isn't responding, then maybe the ABS dealio is dead. What else would that affect though? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about wheel speed right now. I'm gonna worry about fuel level. So because we have a saddle style fuel level fuel level because we have a saddle style fuel tank, here we go. We have two fuel level sensors. And the way that the stock fuel system does is it reads both of them, it takes an average, it sends that data to the cluster. I still have that wiring in. Iwire was kind enough to give me a wire in the jumper harness they made me for fuel level. So I'm going to wire that fuel level sensor wire into the IC7 directly so that way it can just read fuel level. I've been going about this all the wrong way. The calibration is still something we're gonna have to figure out. And I think that's gonna be up for the volts. I think that's why I was reading volts wrong when I was doing this is because I was only reading it off of one sensor and not both because it's ran in series and not parallel. So there's this whole crazy thing with it. So we may have to drain all the fuel back out of the car again to be able to calibrate this thing. But having an accurate reading fuel level sensor is very important. It's very important so that way we don't run out of gas. So let me hop in the back seat. Let me rewire in the stock fuel level sensor um, on the main side. The other side is already done, so. Let's get to town wiring stuff. Hopefully we can get a fuel level sensor to at least work. This has taken me entirely longer than I was expecting, but good news, we have a working fuel level sender now. Um, I'll show you guys what I did wrong and how I corrected it. Once again, a huge shout out to Scott over at Haltech. This dude, that dude is a, is a saint. If you have a Haltech, like I said, and you need customer support, I had to pay international charges when I called him. 100% totally worth it. Spend the extra money, call Australia. They'll actually take the time if you have an issue that they can help correct to remote into your computer and like help you navigate through the problems. Let me start off by saying this car has a saddle fuel tank. If you don't know what a saddle fuel tank is, it's a fuel tank that literally saddles the center of the car where you have part of the fuel tank on this side, part of the fuel tank on that side. So we've got our main fuel pump here with our main fuel level sender on this side and then we have a secondary sub sensor on that side. What you need to do in order to get an accurate fuel level reading is you, well, first of all, you need to measure all of this in volts. Ohms don't 
don't matter at all. You need to know the ohms so that way you know um, how to set it up, but the ohms aren't, it's not how you calibrate this. So I went online and, well, I didn't go online. I have this downloaded. I downloaded, or well, I didn't download, I printed the fuel gauge system wiring diagram for a stock 2017 STI. And this whole portion over here, I don't care about the combination meter. The combination meter is this. It's your, it's your stock gauge cluster. Now how this works is it sends out a signal ground. The signal ground goes down. It goes to your main fuel pump. From from the main fuel pump you then have a wire harness that goes off of the main fuel pump over to your sub level sensor in your secondary fuel pump that is the one on the passenger side of the car from there then you have your signal that goes up and back to the cluster so imagine this box right here this combination meter this is my ic7 display so the ic7 display sends out the signal it goes to the the sub fuel level sensor first crosses over to the fuel pump main sender and then goes back up to the signal ground and that's how it gets all of its signal now when you go to do this the way that you're gonna have to do it is calibrate this by gallons i left a 2.5 gallon reserve in my fuel tank so that way when my fuel level reads zero i still have 2.5 gallons left in there it's the smartest way to do it. so at two gallon 2.5 gallons we had 2.3 volts on the um, fuel level sender and then we did 7.5 gallons which got us to 1.03 uh, and then the rest well mine was a little bit off but 100% um, of the fuel tank is 0.33 volts empty for me is 2.30 that two gallons is probably more like four or five gallons because I probably didn't pull it all out of the fuel tank but it's all right it just means I have a bigger reserve than I need so um, 0.33 volts is going to get you at 100%. So now that we have a working fuel level sender, that is one less issue that we have to worry about. I still don't know what's going on with the VSS sensors. If you don't know what that is, it's just vehicle speed sensor. Um, it's the wheel speed sensor. So uh, let me get the back seat back in. I have another five gallons of gas that I'm going to go put in the BRZ. So that way I just have two full cars. Um, I, have a, I think I have a little bit left in there also. So um, let me get the back seat reassembled and then I'm going to do some digging tonight to see what's going on with the wheel speed sensors to see why they're just not communicating with anything at all when they were before. Like I said, worst case scenario, I'll order the GPS module and then we'll still have vehicle speed odometer and trip and all that stuff. So let's put this thing back together. All right, guys, it's the next day. I'm gonna adjust the alignment on this. I can visually see that the front right wheel needs to be towed in a little bit. Same with the front left. So I'm gonna fix both of that real quick. I'm just gonna eyeball align it so that way it's a little bit better. I'll actually align align the car later. I just don't feel like doing it today. But I wanna take this thing over to the shop today because I got something really cool for the Evo um, that I need to go drop off over there. Plus it'll give me an opportunity to get more braking miles on this and just drive it some more, obviously. Check out what just showed up. This is the FP Red for the Evo. This thing's sick. We have their uh, tile external wastegate housing on here also. Um, this is their journal bearing model for the Evo. This should be able to get us to a decent power. I just want like 500 out of the Evo. It's a street car. I don't need something crazy like this thing. So dope. I want to go drop this off at the shop. I also have the catalytic converter in here and some other smaller stuff that I need to drop off over there also. So now we can get the exhaust manifold on, the turbo, the downpipe, the O2 housing, the catalytic converter, the cat back, all the full exhaust onto the Evo, which is awesome. So with this, let me get this thing uh, aligned real quick. Just a quick uh, eyeball alignment on here just to get things a little bit better just because I can I can see, man, that thing's, that thing's towed in right there. So let me fix this real quick. You guys, I got it to work. I got vehicle speed to work. It's wild. So um, it was, I redid the CAN communication setting or the CAN communication wires from the car to the Haltech, but I had the Haltech in receive only mode for the car's CAN communication system. So it couldn't get any of the data. It was just trying to, the, the stock car's CAN system was trying to receive data from the Haltech and not vice versa. So I fixed that. I got the CAN wires much better wired together now. So vehicle speed works, which is fucking dope. Vehicle speed works, fuel level works. Um, the alignment I kind of fixed, but let's go drive this thing over to the shop. Let's go drop some stuff off. Um, let's see how the car responds to the changes that we've made. Make sure the vehicle speed actually works, works. I don't know if we need to calibrate this or not. When I was on the phone with Scott yesterday, he said that if we're using the stock wheel speed sensors, we shouldn't need to recalibrate it. Um, so we'll find out. Let's go drive this thing.
got the wheel speed sensors to work, um, but by having the wheel speed sensors work, it could just be the traction control needs to be tuned in or something. I don't know how traction control works on these Haltex. I'm gonna have to look into it. But as soon as we try to drive with the wheel speed sensors on, traction control kicks on and it pisses off the car and goes into ignition cut. So that's something I'm gonna have to look, like figure out, but we do know how to make it work now, which is solid. That sounds so good. Yes. Hey, buddy. He does look good, too. Meet your younger brother? Nemesis? Yeah. Nemesis. You're not really, you're probably not going to win this one, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you Sorry. win this one. Sorry. <laughs> Sucks to suck. You got some good stuff in the Evo, though. You got a catalytic converter. Boom. Nice. I feel like it's a decent sized turbo for this thing. That's still spinning. Is it? Yes. It is still spinning. Efficiency. I'm gonna let some of this heat out of here. No leaks, nothing? They look beautiful. Holy shit, those get hot. Yeah. Oh my you, god. An exhaust Dumbass, right there, do not put your hand there. Future reference, if you ever see this car, don't touch that. The only thing you can really touch is the manifold. I don't even want, like, I, anywhere I would put my hand. Is the fender Like, ah, oh, perfect. No, it's not bad. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get up any How's higher. How's the tire feel? Well, tire it's really, spinning all well, the time. Yeah, it doesn't feel bad, so it's dissipating heat real quick. No, it seems to run good under vacuum. Yeah, it's pretty smooth up until I get past like a certain throttle point. Then it starts to like wig out a little bit. Yeah, that's all doing fine. Yeah, like everything's fucking solid. No, I don't want to like. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so I wanted to test fit the FP Red in here, and dude, that that looks good down there. That little turbo, little turbo for this guy. This thing should make some. I I don't know. I don't know how much power it's gonna make. Like I said, the goal for this car is like five. 500 550 or so but dope dude that thing look good i'm about it we got to do like all the oil lines water lines everything like that so we're not permanently going to install the turbo today i just wanted to get it mocked up in here to see how it looked i've already got the intake the uh, o2 housing the downpipe the cat the cat back so we've got full exhaust for this thing now which is dope because if you guys remember when i got the evo it had like a forward facing stock style turbo it was the dumbest thing i've ever seen so dope let's get out of here before traffic gets bad Did you feel it? I did, you're being dangerous. Four PSI boost don't feel like shit. good so far. I don't want to jinx myself though, but... <laughs> Take the chance! We're taking the boost! 
taking the burst. <laughs> I blow this thing up. People what they want, blow it up! People want the boost, they want to see it blow up! Blow it up! Blow it up! Rebuild it again! No! I don't want to do it again! Really nice dance. Right? Like, don't even look. No, cops just don't care so far. So we're trying, trying to get blind eyes. Understanding of it, thinking that a closed deck engine isn't going to stay cool. Yeah. Like you still have coolant passages in a closed deck yeah. engine. Like even if your engine's closed deck, it's not like your car's gonna overheat because you're a closed deck engine. It's all pressurized through it. It doesn't change anything. No. It's just it strengthens the fucking cylinder liners. Your car's not gonna overheat because you have a closed deck engine. So don't think that. Some people think that. It's just it's alright. That's alright. You're, you're not filling it with cement. This isn't your 94 Honda Civic. Hey, don't tell me how to live You're trying life. to throw down the fucking quarter mile. Throw down. car did phenomenal on the drive there and back like no issues i wish i knew how fast i was going but like i said the by enabling the haltech and the stock ecm to try to communicate like that it pisses the car off in a way that traction control keeps kicking on um it's possible that maybe the traction control needs to be tuned i like i said i don't know enough about the haltech elite 2500 yet to make that call um I'm going to look into it if it does need some like tuning or adjustments or figuring out on the traction control side of things then uh, we can make those adjustments if not then GPS module um, is what we're going to do for speed odometer and trip because that'll that'll read all of that and measure all of that we won't have traction control in the car I don't think we need it though if anything I can fit up a Hall effect sensor or a, or a reluctor sensor to the drive shaft to be able to measure um, speed that way also. So I'll figure that out. I'll play with that later. But that is all I've got for you guys on this one. If you guys are excited to see the STI reincarnate as a full blown blue ass phoenix, go ahead and hit that like button, turn black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sign, whatever color it turns for you. But the color of the day today is going to be blue for blue, obviously. And it's exciting that the FP red showed up for the Evo. That thing looks beautiful in that engine bay of the Evo. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you're not subscribed to the channel already and you want to be, I'll put it in one of these corners. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.